starting a new series called I Believe. Say that with me. I believe. I believe. All right. Now, uh, it is based on what is called the Apostles' Creed. And, you know, as I was growing up, I remember memorizing the creed and reciting it every Sunday in the Roman Catholic Church. Maybe some of you have recited it. You know, maybe some of you have recited that in the church or those of you watching online, maybe you have done this as well. Unfortunately, you know, um, I, I didn't really understand it, but maybe you have also recited. So let me know if you've done that. Just put it in the chat. Let me know that you've also recited this. You know, and, and uh, for me, I really didn't understand it. I just recited it, but I never really knew what it meant. It is also unfortunate that many people uh, who recite it do not live it out in their lives. When I surrendered my life to Christ and began a personal relationship with Him, that's when I began to understand what it meant. Unfortunately, I do not hear much about it anymore. Not many churches recite it anymore. It, it has been replaced by statement of faith that is often written in a brochure uh, and you know, probably put on a website somewhere uh, and posted there. Only a few Christian churches recite this. And one that I know is our partner church in uh, Grace and Truth Church in Korea, pastored by Dr. Young Mok Cho, and his son is here, Pastor Jay is here, and he, he's a witness to that. I mean, they recite it every time. When we were there, I just see it every Sunday, they recite the Apostles' Creed in their worship celebration. Now, it's a good thing because it reminds every believer what they believe. It's unfortunate that many Christians do not know this. People uh, who did not come from a Catholic background probably never heard it before. I hope that this series of messages will inspire your faith. Uh, that the purpose of this series of messages is not to give us just an intellectual exercise of history and facts. The purpose is not just to give us information, but rather to help us develop a strong foundation in our Christian faith. Also, I pray that God will birth in us a new passion in our Christian walk. So I'd like you to turn with me to Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 43. It says this, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Now, we see from our passage that after the birth of the church on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, the early Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Their teaching revolved around the gospel, their foundation of faith. Every time they came together, they confessed their faith. Now, they didn't have podcasts or videos, you know, apps. They didn't have all of that. So they recited it to affirm their beliefs. Now, I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of information, but I wanted to give you a brief background of the origin. The rest you can easily read about on the internet, okay? Basically, to avoid heresy or false teaching, the apostles handed on the faith in their brief summary that believers can easily articulate and remember. And they are called creeds. You know, from the Latin word credo, which means I believe and trust. So the Apostles' Creed is the summary of Apostles' faith, the good news of the gospel. A creed is also known as a confession or statement of faith. It is really a profession of faith because they summarize the faith that Christians profess. Now, the original version of this creed called the Nicene Creed was first adopted in 325 A.D., in the first council of Nicaea, an ancient Greek city. And it was modified in 381 in the second council. Now, the original was longer and more detailed. Uh, we don't have time to read that today. So, 
anyway, it has been further modified and one version became accepted as the Apostles' Creed because it was thought to include the essential teaching of the 12 apostles, uh, the early followers of Jesus. So here's the Apostles' Creed as we know it. So I want you to read this with me, all right? Can you read it with me? Even those of you watching online? All right, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now, as you notice, the statement speaks about God and the gospel. Now, it is divided into four main parts. All right, the first three parts, as you can see in the creed, is the Holy Trinity. The first part speaks of the first divine person, God the Father, and the whole wonderful work of creation. And the second part speaks of the second divine person in the Trinity, Jesus Christ and the mystery of his redemption of men. And then the next speaks of the third divine person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, the origin and source of the sanctification. Now the fourth part, the lower part, is the foundation of the church. It speaks about the church. Now the original word, Catholic, here, as you notice, is a small letter C, means universal. It was changed by the Roman Catholic Church to mean their church, but it, it was not meant to be that way. It was supposed to be Catholic Church means universal, right? So, and then it goes on to talk about forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and everlasting life. So our series, I believe, will take us through this statement. I trust that it will rekindle your faith and give you more reason to believe. Amen? Make sure you attend uh, or watch every message in this series and tell your friends and family. Today we are looking at the first part of the creed that says, I believe in God the Father. All right? Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So our first message is, I believe in God the Father. That's the first message. Now, Jesus told his disciples to believe in God. In John 14, verse 1, it says, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, first of all, it starts with the confession, I believe. Now, to believe is something that our society needs very badly. We live in a postmodern world where there are no more absolutes. Ideas are relative. We see people live in both extremes. You know, there are some people who believe strongly on things that don't really have eternal value. They push beliefs that benefit their agenda. And then there are those who do not believe in anything anymore. They don't stand for anything anymore. It seems that whatever pleases us and doesn't seem to hurt anybody, it's okay. Now, it's interesting to listen to the news some time ago when they did a poll on the streets to ask people what they think of the same-sex partners, Bill. And everybody that they surveyed just agreed. And the most common answer was, it doesn't matter to me. See, no one opposed the bill and said anything to the effect that I believe this is wrong or right. There is this attitude of, anything goes. If it's okay with you, it's okay with me. Now, when it comes to our faith, this kind of attitude is also penetrating the church. There is no absolute truth. It's becoming relative to how we feel and our worldview. That's why it seems that it's okay to go to church and not change your life. 
You are still living in sin with your bitterness, your anger, unforgiveness, and promiscuous lifestyle. We say we believe, but our actions speak otherwise. Now, I remember reciting this over and over every week, but it didn't change my life. Maybe you're like that too. You see, to believe God goes beyond the mind and the mere words uttered from our lips. It must go deep into our hearts where it becomes the central focus of our being. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10 says this, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and what? Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is what? With your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. See, friends, the heart is the life-giving organ of your body. Out of the heart flows the blood that gives life throughout your body. When the heart stops, the body stops. The point I'm making is that believing with your heart affects your whole body and ultimately your actions. So that when we say, I believe, and it comes from our heart and not only from our mind, then we act according to what we believe. We cannot say, I believe, and do something contrary to that. You know, friends, it's either we believe or we don't believe. Jesus said it this way in Mark chapter 11, 22 to 24. Have faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours see to believe does not give room for any doubt <laughs> when you believe you already act like you already received it amen, amen? <laughs> praise god so friends the object of our belief is god not just anything or anyone so the statement begins with I believe in God. <laughs> this is a very important statement because more and more we are becoming a godless society. According to the Barna research, the growth of the group of atheists, agnostic and no religious affiliation, that's called the nuns, N O N E S, you know, those kind of group of people increase to nearly double in 15 years. Now you can imagine that their children will most likely not believe in God. And their research also showed that there is a steady decline of church goers among the millennials and the Gen X generations. And guess what? Their children is the Gen Z. So if the millennials and the Gen X are not having faith anymore, guess what will happen to the Gen Z? More and more people are believing in humanism. This is an outlook of thought giving more importance on human abilities and achievement rather than the divine or supernatural matters. Humanists stress the potential significance of the goodness of human beings and find rational means of solving problems. They don't seek God's intervention. They don't ask God anymore. If they can do it, they'll just do it. So it is necessary that we profess our belief in God. He is divine. You know, the Apostles' Creed begins with God because He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know, the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So He existed before the foundation of the world. Before anything was there, he was already there. All right? You don't have to look far to know that there is God. You know, Paul says this, the apostle, in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, he said, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature 
have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. See, you cannot have an excuse that there's no God. You can just look around you <laughs> and you wonder, you know, how could there be no God when you see the beautiful flowers and the great mountains, the beautiful rivers and, and all the things around us? See, friends, we believe in one God which emphasizes the confession of God's oneness. There is not many gods. That God is unique and there's only one God and no other. He says in Isaiah 43, verse 10 to 11, he says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be anyone after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. Friends, to his chosen people, God revealed himself as the only one. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 45, he says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Friends, when we express our belief in God, we are talking about the one and only living God who deserves all our love with heart, soul, and strength. Amen? So when we say, I believe in God, it means I fully trust Him with my life. There is nothing else that I depend on. I have no other gods, not my money, not my career, not my own strength and ability, not in my status, not even my resources, but only in the one true living God, the God of the Bible. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Declare that with me. I believe in God. <laughs> Amen. Now, He is not just any God. Now, some will say, I believe in God. But are we talking about the same God? <laughs> All right? The God of the Bible? Because some people say, I believe in God. You know, maybe some of your friends, your office met, your neighbors and say, I believe in God. But are we talking about the same God? The God of the Bible? That's why to qualify, he says, I believe in God, the Father. <laughs> he is the Father. All right? So, because there's only one Father. The living God is faithful and compassionate who remembers His promises and fulfills them. He is God who enjoys an intimate relationship with His creation and calls them His children. God is not a distant, anonymous force. God is a name. And you can enter into a relationship with Him. Now in the burning bush experience, God calls Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 15 says, Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what should, I, what should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Friends, God reveals his name as I am, not I was. Right? The God who is always there, present, at the, me the needs of his people. He is who you need him to be. All right? When you are sick, he is your healer. When you are troubled, he is your peace. When you lack, he is your provider. When you are weak, he is your strength. When you are down, he's the lifter of your head. When you are being attacked, he is your refuge, a strong tower. He is your rock and salvation. He is the great I am. Now give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. 
Friends, his name speaks of his faithfulness, which is from everlasting to everlasting. May, my, my God can be known. He desires that we may know him, and he reveals himself as the Father. John 1, 11 to 12, it says, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I want to tell you something. All of us are creation of God, but we're not all children of God. You see, you choose to be a child of God. Amen? And so Jesus said, through Jesus Christ, we become the children of God. He is now our Father. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 23, verse 9, Do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. And Jesus refers to God as your father also. You know, in Matthew 6, verse 32, he said, For the pagans run after all these things. He's talking about the basic needs of life. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. See, like a loving parent, he knows your needs. And he has the power to meet them if you will only seek him first. That's why Jesus tells his disciples to pray and not be like the pagans. He said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8 to 9, Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. See, God is your heavenly Father. And just as an earthly father knows the needs of his children, how much more our heavenly father who knows all things he knows your needs amen god is our heavenly father say it or type it god is my father amen you can type it in the chat if you're watching online god is my father now and finally not only not only is he god our father but our daddy is great he is the almighty creator of heaven and earth. Amen? He is the creator of heaven and earth. The God that we believe in, the God of the Bible, is almighty and the creator of heaven and earth. He is the almighty God, the El Shaddai. His name speaks of his power to do what he wants to do. Not only... Uh, is God our Father who lives and cares for us, but He is powerful and He ful to, to fulfill His promises in our lives. You know, it's one thing to promise, to care, uh, love, and provide, but it's another thing to have the ability and the resources to do it. Amen. You know, we as, as earthly parents, we promise to care and provide for our children but we are not always able to fulfill those promises because of our lack of our resources. But God is able. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. All right? You know, friends... <laughs> He is able to do exceedingly. Every, every time you think something, God will do beyond it. God can go beyond your expectation. He goes above what you think. Amen? Whatever you can imagine, God can do better. Amen? With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You and I need to believe that God is mighty to heal you, provide for you, meet your need, and transform your life 
Friends, especially in this time, I don't know what you're going through or what you've been through, but He will make a way when there is no way. He is a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That is who He is. Amen. That is who He is. He created the heavens and the earth. You know, the very first sentence in the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He is not in creation, limited by it. He is outside of creation. He existed before anything was created. Out of nothing, God created the universe into existence. Out of the dirty mud of clay, He fashioned a handsome man. Out of a rib, God formed a beautiful woman. Out of a manger, the Savior of the world was born. Friends, if God with His almighty power can keep the stars, the sun, the moon, and the universe in alignment, if God can create something beautiful and wonderful out of nothing or something that is insignificant, I want you to know today that God can create something out of that situation of yours. God can turn something in your life. Amen? He can open doors for you that have been shut. He can pull down stronghold that is stopping you. When it seems to be hopeless and nothing good seems to come out of it, put your trust in God Almighty and believe Him for that miracle. He can create something from nothing. He can give life to what is dead. He can give light to your darkness. He can turn your situation around and make you an overcomer. See, by yourself, you may be a nobody, but with Almighty God, you are a somebody. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, with God, all things are possible. Believe in God Almighty. There is none like Him. Amen? Friends, to believe in God means more than just words. In order to keep their faith in God vibrant and alive in their hearts, the disciples and the early church wrote the Apostles' Creed, but they meant it to guide their lives. It wasn't just a declaration of their faith that was recited from time to time, but rather it was alive in their hearts and it dictated the very fiber of their being. It caused them to act in a certain way and helped them to stand in times of persecution. The whole creed or statement is about God and their belief in Him. Today, the challenge that is before us is this. Do you believe in God, the Father and Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, the God of the Bible? Now, if we truly believe in God, then we need to demonstrate it in our actions. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17 says this, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful men, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But the man who does the will of God lives forever. Friends, let your belief in God show in your obedience to His will. You received that today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Let us, let us pray and thank the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this message that encourages and strengthens our faith to believe in God Almighty, the Father. And Lord, we pray today that for every person, especially those that are watching online, God, that we will be drawn to you, that you would speak to them, that they're not just reciting this, but Lord, it, they will mean it from their heart. And so Lord, today, thank you for, for speaking to us and encouraging us 
that there is a God that loves us. Not only are you the, uh, the creator of the universe, but you are a wonderful father to us. Help us, Lord, to continue to build relationship with you, especially those who do not know you. May they also turn to you to become children of God. And so, Lord, today, we commit our lives to you once again, and we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hello, champions. Thank you for tuning in today here at Champion Life Center Church Online. We are honored and blessed that you have chose to worship with us. We pray that you felt welcome and love that your worship experience was one that was engaging, fulfilling, and uplifting. And if you have committed your life to Christ today, please send us a note by visiting our website at championlife.ca and select contact. Send your feedback and your prayer requests or call us by phone. And remember, you can give your tithes and your offering to our website, text to give, use the Champion Life Center app, or e-transfer your giving. Just make sure to select the location that you are giving to. Thank you so much for your continued support and may the Lord bless you richly. Feel free to share this broadcast with your friends, with your loved ones, and with your family. Lastly, don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. This is the best way to stay updated with everything that's going on here at Champion Life Center community. And of course, we want to stay connected with you. Let us know how we can be praying for you as well. Thank you once again for tuning in with us and have the, a wonderful Sunday with your loved ones. We hope to see you next Sunday. Stay safe. Rejoice and be blessed.